Welcome to Book Buddies. My name is Miss Sarah, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm the preschool director at Woodbury Lutheran Preschool. I'm really glad that you get to spend a little bit of time with me today. Today we're going to talk about something that some of you might like, and some of you might think is kind of icky, but I think we have some fun activities planned. We're going to talk about worms. So today I'm going to share two books with you. The first book is called Worm Weather. Worm Weather. This book is written by Jean Taft. Drip, drop, skip, hop, splish, splash, sidewalk, dash. Wiggle, wor worm, worm, wiggle, squirm. Worm weather, coat, hat, rain goes, splat. Boots jump, old tree stump. Big stomp, puddle swamp. Mud stop, belly flop. Almost. Dark cloud, very loud. Bright flash, thunder crash. Quick race, pizza place. Drip dry, pizza pie. Sun pops, drizzle stops. Birds fly, rainbow sky. Run, sing, playground, playground swing. Worm, worm, wiggle, squirm. It's worm weather. Now that we're done with that book, I'd like to show you a video that teaches you just a little bit more about worms. They're pretty fascinating and maybe you'll learn something new. You know, Squeaks and I spend a lot of time underground, and that means we've made a bunch of squirmy little friends. And if you've spent any time digging in the ground, you've certainly met them too. I'm talking about earthworms. These animals are super cool and super hardworking too. Let's see if we can get the dirt on these wiggly worms. First of all, even though you often find earthworms outside where you find insects like ants and beetles, earthworms aren't insects. Can you spot the differences? Remember what makes an insect an insect? Six legs, three main body parts, and a hard exoskeleton. Our earthworm doesn't match that at all. Earthworms have smooth skin and a body made up of many small segments. It kind of looks like they're covered in a lot of little rings. And each segment has small hairs that are almost too tiny to see. And even though they're long and skinny like snakes, they're not snakes. Snakes have a skeleton and earthworms don't, but they do have strong muscles. In order to move, the earthworm squeezes its muscles together, which makes its body thinner and longer. Then the earthworm uses those little hairs on its body to hold onto the soil around it and pull itself forward. Have you ever seen a bird trying to pull an earthworm out of the ground? The worm can make it hard for the bird because it can actually hang on to the dirt with those tiny little hairs. Now, just like most animals, earthworms have a front end and a back end. Up front, you'll find their mouth and a teeny tiny brain about the size of a pinhead. But that little brain gets the job done. Earthworms are able to sense light and vibrations so they know when to wiggle away. And when earthworms need to wiggle away, where do they go? That's right, underground. 
Earthworms spend most of their time safe in underground tunnels called burrows. It not only keeps them hidden from predators, but that nice, wet soil keeps their skin moist. And that's super important because earthworms need to breathe, just like people do, but they don't do it in the same way. They actually absorb oxygen through their skin. And in order to do that, they need to keep wet. That's why you're most likely to see earthworms when you're digging through damp soil or mud. But maybe you've seen earthworms even when you haven't been making mud pies. Have you ever seen them hanging around on the sidewalk after a rainstorm? A rainy day for an earthworm is a perfect moving day. Sometimes one area becomes too crowded with earthworms, so they need to find a new home. But they need to keep their skin moist while they're out moving around. So earthworms use these soggy days to come out and look for a new place to live. Then back into the ground they go. But the dirt isn't just a safe place for worms to hide, it's also their food. As an earthworm moves through the soil, it's also eating the dirt. Earthworms get their nutrients from dead and decaying parts of plants, like leaves and roots, that are in the soil. And earthworms are hungry. They can eat half their body weight in just one day. But maybe the coolest thing about earthworms? As they munch through the soil, they actually make the soil better for the rest of us. How do they do that? Well, the tiny tunnels that earthworms make as they wiggle through the dirt help bring water and air deep into the ground, and that makes it easier for other living things like plants and fungus to live in it. Plus, as earthworms break down all of those dead plant parts, they help spread around all the nutrients that are in them to make food for new things to grow. Some people even keep earthworms in their garden on purpose. They feed the earthworms things like banana peels and apple cores. Then the worms turn those scraps into compost, a rich, smelly, nutritious kind of plant food made from dead plants. To you, it might just look like trash, but to an earthworm, it's treasure. Healthy earthworms means healthy soil, and healthy soil means healthy people, because we need it to grow plants for our own food. So the next time you come across an earthworm, thank them. They're hard at work helping flowers, trees, grass, and plants grow. And thanks to you for joining us here at SciShow Kids. If there's anything that you'd like to learn more about, ask your parents to help you email us at kids at thescishow.com, and we'll see you next time. Wasn't that interesting to learn about worms? Was there something new that you learned? Maybe about how their bodies are made up of segments? Or even that they have little hairs? I don't think I even knew that. Now that we've learned some facts about worms, let's read a silly story about a worm called Diary of a Worm by Doreen Cronin. March 20th, Mom says there are three things I should always remember. One, the earth gives us everything we need. Two, when we dig tunnels, we help take care of the earth. He's saying, must make tunnel, help earth breathe. Three, never bother daddy when he's eating the newspaper. March 29th. Today, I tried to teach Spider how to dig. First of all, his leg got stuck. He's saying, I think I've twisted one of my ankles. Then he swallowed a bunch of dirt. I give up. Tomorrow, he's going to teach me how to walk upside down. March 30th. Worms cannot walk upside down. April 4th, fishing season started today. We all dug deeper. Here they are. It says, did you guys hear something? April 10th, it rained all night and the ground was soaked. We spent the entire day on the sidewalk. Hopscotch is a very dangerous game. April 15th, I forgot my lunch today. I got so hungry that I ate my homework. My teacher made me write, I will not eat my homework 10 times. When I was finished, I ate that too. April 20th, I snuck up some, on some kids in the park today. 
they didn't hear me coming. I wiggled right up between them, and they screamed. I love it when they do that. May 1st. Grandpa taught us that good manners are very important. So today I said good morning to the first aunt I saw. Good morning. There were 600 more of them in a line. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, nice to see you. Howdy, good morning. I stood there all day. May 8th. I had the worst nightmare last night. Giant birds playing hopscotch. Mom says I have to stop eating so much garbage right before I go to bed. May 15th. I got in a fight with Spider today. He told me you need legs to be cool. Then he ran. I couldn't keep up. Maybe he's right. May 16th. I made Spider laugh so hard he fell out of his tree. Who needs legs? And that big word says dud. May 28th. Last night I went to the school dance. You put your head in, you put your head out. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's all we could do. June 5th. Today we made macaroni necklaces in art class. I brought mine home and we ate it for dinner. June 15th. My older sister thinks she's so pretty. I told her that no matter how much time she spends looking in the mirror, her face will always look like her rear end. Spider thought that was really funny. Mom did not. July 4th. When I grow up, I want to be a Secret Service agent. Spider says I will have to be very careful because a president might step on me by mistake. It's a dangerous job, I told him, but someone's got to do it. July 28th. Three things I don't like about being a worm. One, I can't chew gum. Two, I can't have a dog. Three, all the homework. July 29th. Three good things about being a worm. I never have to go to the dentist. I never get in trouble for tracking mud through the house. I never have to take a bath. Mom's saying, who's my grubby little boy? August 1st. It's not always easy being a worm. We're very small, and sometimes people forget we're even here. But like Mom always says, the earth never forgets we're here. Here's a fun poem called Wiggling Worms. It's a little bit like five little monkeys sitting in the tree, but this is about five little wiggling worms on the ground. Five little wiggle worms wiggling all around, teasing Mr. Redbird, you can't catch me. Down swept Mr. Redbird as fast as could be. Chop, there goes the blue worm, now where can he be? Four little wiggle worms wiggling all around, teasing Mr. Redbird, you can't catch me. Down swoop Mr. Redbird as fast as could be. Chomp, there goes the orange bird. Where, now where can he be? Three little wiggle worms wiggling all around, teasing Mr. Redbird, you can't catch me. Down swoop Mr. Redbird as fast as could be. Chomp, there goes the yellow worm. Now where can she be? Two little wiggle worms wiggling all around, teasing Mr. Redbird, you can't catch me. Down swoop Mr. Redbird as fast as could be. Chomp! There goes the pink worm, now where can she be? One little wiggle worm wiggling all around, teasing Mr. Redbird, you can't catch me. Down swoop Mr. Redbird as fast as could be. Chomp! There goes the green worm, now where can he be? No little wiggle worms wiggling all around. None teasing Mr. Redbird, you can't catch me. Down swoop Mr. Redbird, searching all around. Where are the wiggle worms? Safe, under the ground. If you like that poem about the wiggling worms, you could maybe make one at home. Maybe you have some construction paper at home that you could cut some wiggling worms from. 
you might be able to draw a red bird, or I printed mine from the computer and cut it out. And maybe you have a grocery bag at home. Wouldn't that be great ground to hide your worms under? A little trick that I did, if you want to do this trick too, is I cut two worms out of each color so I could hide one set while I told that poem. If you want to do that at home, the poem's down below in the comments. This activity is a counting activity that you can use some things that you might have at your house. I got some gummy worms to do this activity, but if you don't have gummy worms, maybe you have some pieces of yarn that you could cut into worm-like pieces. I'm also going to use a tongs, and if you don't have a tongs like this, you can still play this game. Just use your fingers. And then you need something to help you count. So there's two things that you could use. Maybe you have dice at your house, but today I'm going to use some Uno cards and I'm going to use the numbers on the back of those. So here's what I'm gonna do. We mix up our cards. I bet you do that in other games that you play at your house. And then we start with all the worms on one plate. Each person that's playing gets their own plate or special place to put worms. And you draw a card. That one says two. So if it's my turn, I'm going to use the tongs and put two worms on that plate. Now, you might be playing with somebody else. Maybe a brother or sister or your mom or dad. And if it's their turn, they're going to draw a card too. This card says three. So if it's their turn, they're going to count out three worms. One, two, three. You can go back and forth and you can play the game a few times. Or maybe you can do it and divide the worms and save them in a Ziploc bag. And you can eat those for a treat later. Have fun counting worms. In this activity, we're going to make a worm that's actually a bird feeder. So the things that I am using to do this are a piece of pipe cleaner that is bendy. Um, you could do it with a piece of string too. And then I have some Cheerios and I put some in a bowl. And the first thing that I'm gonna do with my pipe cleaner is I'm gonna make a great big head. We're gonna pretend that this is kind of the worm's head and I'm gonna wrap it around. If you have trouble with this, that's okay. It's sometimes hard to get that started. You could ask a grown-up to help you. And then this part, it will be easy for you to do. You can push lots of Cheerios up and onto your pipe cleaner. When you get it all the way filled, you'll take the end and turn it up just a little bit so your Cheerios don't fall off the bottom. Then you're going to go outside and you're going to find a tree to hang your Cheerio worm in. And you can check it later this week to see if some birds have eaten any of the Cheerios that you left for them. We'll just use the head to hang the worm from the tree branch and then watch and see what happens. Have fun. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Book Buddies. I hope you had fun learning about worms and doing some of our worm activities. We'll see you again in July.